Hi everybody. Um, just kind of wanted to do a little short video, and um, as you can see, I called it the altar. And really, I just want to give a brief testimony. Um, there was a point of time where you know I would go to church, um, and I grew up in church, you know, all my life. But um, for many years, I went to church, and I just went there. You know, what I, you know, whether I went there to hear the music, you know, maybe there was a good message that Sunday, and caught my, you know, caught my attention. Um, a lot of times, you know, I just went, and I really didn't see any other purpose, just other than going to church. But. Um, there was something about that altar, that altar call, and knowing that I needed to go down there, but like most of us, we were like, oh, I don't know. You know, you hear that altar call, you know, the pastor saying the Lord, you know, wants to, to get to know you, you know, the Lord wants a relationship with you, come down and give your life to Christ, and, you know, many times I sat in my seat, many years, almost all my life I sat in my seat. Never really going down front, never really deciding that, you know, I wanted to give my life to Christ. And, you know, I don't know what it was about that altar, but, you know, I'm sure that many of us, you know, many of you guys probably will be able to relate to me and saying that it's scary. <laughs> and I don't even know why it's scary, because it's really not scary. It's just in your mind, you have so, so many thoughts. Satan's whispers in your ears telling you, oh, no, you know, you know God. You don't need to go to the altar to know God. Um, you know, what are people going to think? You know, what if, what if somebody in here knows you? You know, are you really ready to give your life to Christ? Are you really ready to be a Christian? You know, and, I mean, there's just so many things that, you know, a lot of times we're thinking. But, you know, I just encourage you to go to the altar. You know, whatever it is that you're dealing with. It's not about anybody else that's in the building. It's not about anybody else that's around. It is about you and God. It is about taking that step and saying, Lord, I want this to be more than what, you know, coming to church on Sundays, more than putting on a cute dress or a nice suit. I want more than just sitting my body in a building. You know, I want more than just saying, oh, that was a good song that the choir sung. I want more than, oh, that was a good sermon, you know, that applied to me this week. I want more, you know. I want you. And I guess it's kind of fitting because I'm currently right now playing a song called I Need You More, which is probably looks funny from this view, but um, the song's called I Need You More um, by Kim Walker. And um, that's just how, you know, that's, that is the approach that I guess that we should have, you know, going to the altar. That, you know, we want more of God. We want more from Him than just, you know, a regular Sunday service. And, you know, am I saying that's what I did? Actually, no, it's not what I did. <laughs> but it is what God did instead. And, you know... What happened is basically I was going through a lot at a particular time in my life, and, you know, I was just tired. I was just fed up with any and everybody. And, you know, I just went one day with my friend. We decided that we were going to go to church that Sunday. And, you know, we were just sitting down, you know, while praise and worship was going on. And, you know, we were all, you know, we were both kind of in our own little worlds reflecting on, you know, our lives, you know, reflecting in praise and worship. You know, me personally, I was actually just sitting there crying. Um, you know, I just had so much going through my mind, just torment, just unforgiveness, just bitterness, just aggravation and anger. I had a lot going on, a lot. <laughs> but even in the midst of all of that, God was already, he was already moving. <laughs> he already had a plan. Um, you know, the spirit of God was still moving around in that building because there was like two young ladies and, you know, they were going around with their flags and they were, you know, praising God and worshiping and speaking in tongues. And, you know, I knew that they came and stood over me and my friend and they were just kind of like waving the flags over us, waving their hands over us, just speaking in tongues from behind us. Um, 
you know, and I, you know, I, again, you know, I, I paid attention, but I didn't, you know, I, you know, I was still kind of in my own little world, but after all that happened, um, another lady, she was talking past the aisle, and she just smiled at me, and I smiled back at her, but, you know, I really just didn't think nothing other than a greeting, and um, eventually the minister was, you know, getting ready to preach the word that he had today, that day, I'm sorry, not today, <laughs> preach that day, and he just stood there at the altar with this look like, you know, like it wasn't quite that time, and sure enough, that's what he said, you know, he said, I don't feel like the Lord lead me to speak just yet, you know, everybody continued to worship, continue to worship and praise God, and he just stood there for a while, you know, and now I know that, you know, he was you know, listening for direction from the Holy Spirit, and shortly after he sat, you know, stood there for a few, came walked right up to me, right up to me in the aisle and said, the Lord wants you to come down, put his hand out to me, said, the Lord wants you to come down, and, you know, I was surprised, because <laughs> I wasn't expecting it, but at the same time, you know, for many years, I, again, I sat in that pew with fear, worrying about, you know, things that didn't matter because ultimately it didn't matter what anybody else thought. It didn't matter what anybody else had to say. It was the moment that was set for me and the Lord. It was set for me to receive Christ the right way <laughs> for the first time. And so sure enough, that's what I did. I went down front and they began to minister to me and pray over me. And I just, you know, stood there and, you know, cried and, you know, silently cried. But um, at, the particular, at that particular point, um, the lady who had walked past me earlier and smiled ran up out of nowhere um, and just, like, moved everybody that was by me, just moved everybody that was in front of me and praying for me and basically just wrapped her arms around me and basically said, you know, you can forgive, you can forgive. And, um, you know, basically she said, I was molested too. And that immediately, I like stopped and looked at her like, are you serious? Like, did you just say that to me? And I just broke down at that point. I just completely lost it because what she said right there was something that I had only shared with like five people ever. Um, I was molested as a young child. And for her to run up out of the blue and say that to me, and I don't know her from Adam or Eve, you know, I knew that that was God. I knew that there was no mistake, you know, that the Lord was trying to get my attention, and yes, he definitely did, he definitely got my attention, and, um, you know, that day I was renewed with the Holy Spirit, because um, I had received the Holy Spirit at a young age, like I was 12, but, you know, I had gotten away from the church, of course, so, you know, through all the mess I was going through, and plus before that, but, you know, he basically refreshed me, revived me with a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost, and, um, from then on, my life has always it's been about the Lord. Um, definitely hasn't been easy, but, you know, again, my words today are just to encourage you and just to say that, you know, don't be afraid of the altar. Don't be afraid of anything else. Again, I keep saying this, but I'm saying this for a reason, because I want people to know that the altar is not a scary place. It is not a place to to worry and to fret. It is a place to lay down your burdens, it's to lay down those fears, lay down your life, for the one who laid down his life for you, Jesus Christ, and be resurrected with him in all his power and his might and his glory. Be resurrected with him in your new life with him. You know, believe on him. Believe in the Bible. Believe in his word. Believe the word that says it is life to your bones. It is life. It is hope. It is salvation. It is faith. It is clarity. It is renewing and refreshing. It is so much more than I can even explain. I can give words all day, but, you know, honestly, it's your experience. It is your testimony to the goodness of God. You know, I just pray that if you've never given the Lord a chance, that you give him one. Take that chance. Take that opportunity. Go meet him at the altar. Lay it down. Sacrifice yourself. You know, I don't mean a literal sacrifice. But in a sense, it is literal. It's a new life. You're letting go of everything you want, old, the old life, everything you once knew. 
You know, everyone who looks at a Christian life and says it's boring, it's you can't do this, it's a bunch of rules, you know, I gotta listen to one person and he's my head and, you know, I'm obe I have to obey him and everything. Yes, you sure do. You sure do. But is it not worth it? In the end when you are spending your eternity with the Lord on the new earth that will come down, the new Jerusalem that will come down to this earth. All the old will be wiped away. It will be burned up and made new. You know, is it not worth that? Or is it worth spending your life in hell regretting and <laughs> being tormented day and night in the presence of God, in the presence of those who accepted him? You know, is it worth that to sit back? Is your pride enough? Is your ego enough? Is your worries enough to sit back and not taste the Lord and see how good he is? I don't know. That's up to you to answer. But, um, you know, I pray that that you guys won't be like me. And maybe that's going to be you. I don't know. But I pray that you're not like me. I pray that, you know, you allow his spirit to draw you to a relationship with him. You know, no gimmicks, no, you know, music or nothing to to lure you, no fancy words to lure you, just the word of God and just a, a desire to know Jesus Christ, plain and simple. You know, I'm just sharing my testimony just so that you know that, you know, I, I had the same fears and thoughts as you did. But uh, again, hopefully it's just some words of encouragement. Otherwise, um, I don't really have much to say. <laughs> this is just me, no filter, just saying it. So, I hope you have a wonderful day. And I hope you think on the words that I just stated. But, talk to you later. I'm sure I'll be bringing another teaching to you pretty soon. So, stand by. <laughs> Love you all. Jesus loves you most importantly. And have a wonderful day.